morning and uh, now I have reached uh, at the end of this course and of course, uh, I have discussed uh, uh, several topics now and I will summarize today that actually what are the important points actually you have to go through. Uh, there are several chapters we have done and each chapter uh, we have uh, discussed uh, quite elaborately. Uh, but what are the highlights in each chapter? I will just uh, mention here, uh, so that you can give importance to those areas to prepare for exam. And uh, I have started with some introduction and then uh, uh, some review on soil mechanics and then I have started with uh, shallow foundation, uh, bearing capacity, shallow foundation settlement. Uh, then I have um, uh, done actually uh, soil exploration and geotechnical investigation. Then we have done uh, perhaps uh, deep foundation. Then we have done uh, earth retaining wall. Then we have done some seed pile wall. Then we have done deep excavation or breast cut. Then we have done introduction to machine foundation. These are the topics we have uh, completed uh, as we, I have desired. And now, I will just uh, chapter wise, what are the important things uh, one has to, you, you have to go, now you have to go through uh, carefully uh, for preparation of the exam. I will just uh, highlight one by one. Uh, first, of, first of all, first slide I am showing here that some conclusion about the foundation engineering. Uh, that is, I, I repeatedly I say that soil mechanics is the tool that help you to select, design and construct foundation elements and art structure. So, that means, soil mechanics behind it will be there though uh, uh, it is not required, uh, but without soil mechanics we cannot uh, 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 step into foundation engineering. So, one has to be thorough in soil mechanics first and if you are not done soil mechanics do not jump into this course it will be difficult. So, so soil mechanics is the foundation for this foundation engineering that is what I say. And another important thing from the uh, uh, foundation uh, uh, thing is I want to highlight that failure is an um, failure means what exactly. Okay. So, foundation fails means when we say it is a failure uh, occurred. So, failure is an unacceptable difference between expected and observed behavior. That means what? I design for a foundation settlement of 20 millimeter and if I observe that it is a 40 millimeter that means, it has to be considered as a failure. It is not acceptable. If your settlement is 15 millimeter which you have pre, uh, designed for 20 and if the settlement is 15 that means, your design is within the uh, sat, uh, satisfactory. And if you find instead of 20, if you find 40, 50 or even more then this can be treated as failure. That means, the failure is an unacceptable difference between expected and observed behavior. So, expected, expected behavior is 25 millimeter settlement, observed behavior is the 50 millimeter settlement. So, that difference is unacceptable. So, that is called failure. Similar to that I can call, I can say same thing in terms of bearing capacity or any other thing. And key goal as a foundation engineer is a build economic foundation that works. That is actually what actually that means what um, uh, you have to design a foundation uh, economic that you have to look for economic also. If, if you make a very uh, massive structure definitely it will be workable, but uh, if you make uh, going to do that then it may be too expensive that is also not uh, desirable. So, you have to make eco eco economic foundation and, and that will be safe and serviceable. Safe means it will stand and it will be stand for expected life. So, uh, so that means, uh, uh, sometime uh, we, uh, we uh, do carry out different analysis, carry out different investigation, but finally, you have to build something which should work. That is what I want to, you may do some apply your judgment or experience. Uh, uh, so, that uh, based on calculation it is coming something, but still you are giving something based on your experience because otherwise it may not work. So, that is what one thing one has to learn through practicing foundation engineering. Build with confidence, use field work, lab result, analysis, design, but at the end use that work. 
that means what actually I, I already I have mentioned that point that means built with confidence that means you have to do several types of work field work lab work analysis uh, office work but ultimately you have to uh, build uh, 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 that has to uh, that work actually that is the main objective actually uh, you may do many thing but and sometime you may not finally may not take but whatever you have done based on that you gain some experience that to be used and design something which will be uh, uh, that will work. So, the, these are actually overall conclusion about foundation engineering uh, that you have to do many things, uh, but ultimately you have to do uh, your judgment or experience uh, all those things to very very important. Now, go uh, look at uh, um, uh, the chapter 1 that is what we have done as bearing capacity and shallow foundation, we, we have to very carefully you have to learn that ultimate bearing capacity that bearing capacity theory by Tarzig and Mayer of how what are the differences between these two theories and how bearing ultimate bearing capacity is expressed and then that three component one is the uh, cohesion component, surcharge component and unit weight component that is C n c gamma n q uh, gamma d n q and half gamma b n gamma how they have derived that process one has to uh, learn. Of course, detailed derivation is not necessary, but understanding is required what are the different failure, where the, how is the failure um, uh, takes place uh, below the foundation, what different zones form all those things to, has to be one, one has to be familiar with once you are becoming foundation engineering. Then you have to understand uh, different terminologies actually is net ultimate, ultimate that means you apply um, uh, uh, pressure on the footing initially low pressure is taking if you slowly increase at some time it will fail. When it fails that is called ultimate bearing pressure okay. and uh, then there is a net ultimate then safe ultimate then finally, allowable actually. So, these are the terminology I have discussed uh, ultimate minus gamma times d f is the net ultimate and if you provide factor of safety to that then it become uh, your safe ultimate. And then finally, if you add the finally gamma d that become allowable pressure that is actually bearing capacity will be used as a for design. Similarly, bearing capacity on sand and clay. So, general bearing capacity will be uh, derived when finally, you have to modify it when it is a sand, when it is a clay what will be the bearing capacity. Again effect of water table that means, while deriving the bearing capacity theory we assume that water table will be below. Uh, b uh, uh, b depth below from uh, below from the base of the footing okay so, so that means if your footing is here then uh, you, you consider water table uh, beyond that this is b so water table somewhere here if water table goes here then how bearing capacity changes that the effect of water table one has to learn very uh, uh, carefully then effect of depth and so once Knowing the Tarjagi Mehrab, then later, later on basic and other people what they have given, they have introduced a further different inclination different factors, depth factor, shape factor, inclination factor that has to be also learned carefully and bearing capacity eccentrically loaded footing. That means, if the footing is there, then if I apply load here, then uh, it will be having uh, uniform pressure, but instead of here, if your load is applied somewhere here or load is applied somewhere here eccentrically loaded then there are different ways to handle this one. So, that also we have discussed one has to learn that. Okay. Then uh, 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 settlement chapter actually uh, if I consider the total settlement of the foundation that will be consist of so many things actually elastic settlement then uh, consolidation settlement then sec secondary settlement and we have discussed in detail about the elastic settlement again elastic settlement by different methods and, uh, and then consolidation settlement and consolidation settlement and, and you can see that method of estimating elastic settlement whatever we have discussed Martman method that has to be learned carefully and uh, method of estimation of consolidation settlement when you con do consolidation settlement again uh, soil can be of normally consolidated or it can be of 
uh, over consolidated. So, in that case two different types of formula we have derived that has to be also learned uh, carefully that application may be there during exam and consolidation settlement again elastic settlement is immediate we know, but consolidation settlement generally takes uh, over a period of time and we have to find out also that how long the consolidation should take place. So, for that we need to understand that time consolidation degree of consolidation and then using the degree of consolidation you need to predict that time of achieving certain degree of consolidation and considering a single drain that means, a soil compressible layer here and foundation is here then if it is a double drain analysis is something and if it is a single drain that means, this is restricted only one side then time will be different. So, that also one has to learn carefully this is nothing but application of soil mechanics here purely application of soil mechanics this chapter. Then we have discussed about the, uh, the soil investigation that soil exploration planning we have given how frequently you have to do soil uh, borehole at what depth, what is the spacing, what is the location all details we have done. So, those things to be uh, has to be uh, go, one has to go through carefully uh, those are important and then uh, borehole is one part that to see the stratification and the same during borehole uh, making borehole advancing borehole what we do we collect sample and carry out also field test and when you carry out sample sample can be of disturbed sample called undisturbed how to collect some disturbed sample how to collect uh, undisturbed sample how to collect disturbed sample there are procedures we discard that has also has to one has to learn carefully and then there are different field testing we have discussed there are different laboratory testing also discussed that has to one has to go through in detail. So, particularly field test in foundation engineering whatever field test we have discussed like SPT, CPT and uh, your uh, VNCR uh, those things uh, one should go through uh, for solving the problem. Then uh, we have uh, 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 discussed uh, art pressures actually and while uh, uh, art pressure actually we, we first we have uh, what is the use of uh, determining art pressure because art pressure is required to design the retaining wall art retaining wall and so, uh, so at the beginning we have discussed different types of art retaining wall. So, gravity wall then cantilever wall and then uh, uh, internally stabilized externally stabilized the gross definition uh, div, uh, division and then afterwards we have done again different types of retaining wall one is cantilever then gravity retaining wall creep wall then gabion wall and how they are actually have discussed then uh, when you have a retain earth retaining wall what are the defined different types of pressure developed one is earth pressure at rest that means when there is a no movement of wall and then active that means when the wall moves away from the backfield that then pressure will be released and when just before failure that what is the minimum pressure developed that is actually active pressure at uh, uh, active art pressure. So, that is actually one and then again if the wall moves towards the backfield then pressure will be increasing and it will be increasing increasing and just before failing it will be reaching to the maximum level and that maximum pressure is called a, a passive art pressure. So, those things we have discussed how to determine active pressure, how to determine art pressure at rest, how to determine passive art pressure those procedure we have discussed and in that uh, we have discussed Rankine's and Coulomb's theory you need to know what are the difference between Rankine's theory what is the different uh, and Coulomb's theory uh, actually Coulomb's theory though. Uh, more versatile because it has considered uh, 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 slope backfill and uh, slope to wall and then friction between the wall and soil all those things that is considered, but because of the simplicity mostly we use Rankine's theory and I have also discussed in length about Rankine's theory in this course and you should go through that. Then uh, initially we have done most of the analysis for uh, level backfill if the backfill is slope then how to modify that we have also discussed. Then uh, in, uh, we, we the earth pressure again for 
cohesive soil, cohesive soil that if there is a backfill mostly will be used cohesionless soil, but sometimes it is a cohesive soil is there which is not desired most of the time, but if it is there then how will be the pressure diagram and sometime there may be two layers two uh, so this is a retaining wall and backfill may be uh, uh, this is one type of sand this is another type of sand two different sand layers may be there or it may be uh, sand here clay here or clay here sand here like the layered backfill also can be there so all those things we have discussed we should must go through and then uh, when there is a backfill is clay then what is the depth of tension crack and what is the depth maximum depth of unsupported cart there also we have discussed uh, by uh, uh, following this earth pressure theories. And then uh, finally, after knowing all those things earth pressure theories and all then uh, we, we need to uh, analyze, analyze stability analysis what the, of the retaining wall have to one has to do and for stability analysis or earth wall uh, uh, retaining wall means what? you have to find out the factor of safety against sliding, factor of safety against overturning and factor of safety against bearing capacity. That means, uh, you, if you want to design a uh, retaining wall, then what you have to do? You can assume a uh, dimension of retaining wall and then based on the dimension of retaining wall and backfill soil, you have to calculate all the forces and after knowing the all the forces, then we can carry out uh, that uh, analysis whether it is stable. Stable means what the different kind three different kinds of failure can occur for retaining wall. One is overturning that means, this wall can rotate along this and overturn or this wall can slide along this base because if the pressure is excessive it can slide or because of this loading the below the foundation pressure become more than the actual bearing capacity of the soil in that case you have to modify. So, that uh, analysis has to be done. So, these are the actually art pressure theory. So, different things we have discussed one has to go through these are the important uh, parts of it. Next one actually was pile foundation and in the pile foundation you can see there are several topics we have discussed. First of all we have classified the piles different types of classification based on material, based on function, based on material like concrete pile, wooden pile, steel pile. If it is a function then it is actually whether a friction pile or it is a uh, uh, end bearing pile. So, like that there are several types of classification we have done and then we have done load transfer mechanism. That means, if I apply it, if there is a pile and if I apply a load here and then how the load uh, distributed over the depth of the pile and that has to be learned. When is a friction pile distribution is something, when is end bearing pile distribution is different and when is a man, uh, partially friction, partially end bearing then distribution again, again another type. So, that tra load transfer mechanism one has to uh, see that I have discussed. Then, then after knowing all those things then we, we need to learn actually how to find out the capacity of each pile and so initially we will do for single pile and for single pile when they are driven in clay we can estimate the capacity when single pile driven in sand also you can find out estimate the capacity. So, these two cases that means pile driven in sand, pile driven in clay how to estimate the load cap load that these are these are actually uh, important these two one has to learn and we know that uh, that uh, pile foundation rarely will be used as a single pile most of the time a group of pile will be used for uh, supporting the uh, structure. So, because of that capacity of the group pile also essential and they are actually efficiency of the group pile also is the, there is a term that we have also discussed capacity of the group piles and efficiency of the pile that means that one has to learn. So, if the uh, capacity of the single pile is q i and multiplied by n that become the supposed to be the uh, uh, capacity of the group pile, but actual capacity of the group pile may be less than that. So, this uh, that capacity divided by this actually your efficiency. So, that one has to learn and uh, while calculating the capacity of the group uh, there can be of 
two different ways can be calculate uh, if the spacing is very close then suppose like this spacing is very close then the pile may fail as a entire as a block. So, a block of dimension this and length of pi equal to the length uh, as a entire block can uh, fail based on that one can find out group capacity that is block capacity and another actually uh, calculating the efficiency of the pile depending on the spacing and all there are some efficiency formula we have given. So, efficiency multiplied by uh, 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 individual pile multiplied by n based on that that you will get another group capacity and that is also called based on individual pile failure because we have calculated individual pile capacity multiplied by n and then multiplied by efficiency. So, one is actually based on individual pile failure then use this formula find out capacity and based on block failure you find out the another block capacity. So, these two capacity we are getting for the uh, group, but ultimate recommended capacity of the group will be lesser of these two. So, this one has to learn very carefully. So, I have done a number of problems also. So, so this thing so we have to do uh, and then uh, test pile and pile load test. Generally uh, based on uh, uh, site investigation whatever soil parameter we get and based on that soil parameter we generally assess the capacity of the pile foundation. And then uh, sometime there may be error in estimation in soil property or some other uh, problem. So, because of that to make sure that your capacity is the correct capacity we have to do a test in the field. So, one of the pile actually can be tested or uh, maybe one or more pile can be tested uh, to assess the capacity of the pile. So, th they are actually testing procedure how to carry out the test uh, we have discussed that actually if the capacity of the pile is 200 uh, kilo Newton then you have to apply you have to go up to 400 double and load will be applied in 25 percent of that and then you have to go up to the uh, maximum load and then you have to unload it by a step and then this loading unloading uh, based on loading and unloading time uh, during loading and unloading time you have to observe settlement then pressure versus settlement you can plot and using those actually you can predict the capacity of the pile and that actually uh, one has to do test pile and by doing test pile what are the advantage we get what are the information and get what are the additional information we get one we have discussed that can be dis, uh, one has to go through and finally, settlement of single and group pile again like shallow foundation we undergo settlement then group pile also will undergo settlement, but pile foundation generally settlement range is less and to reduce the settlement most of the time we go for pile foundation it will be less, but how less or sometime pile, pile foundation rest, uh, limiting settlement also less. So, whether finally, you are reaching to that level or not that to be verified. So, there are different settlement calculation procedure also we have discussed one has to go through that also carefully. Next one was the seat pile wall, seat pile wall again it is a uh, uh, quite uh, lengthy and uh, rigorous uh, thing and there are method of analysis also rigorous method or single plant method is there though I have discussed rigorous method for one case I have not discussed for other cases and finally, I have tried to adopt the modified uh, simplified method and one has to go through that and retaining wall uh, seat pile wall can be of two types cantilever seat pile wall when there is a cantilever seat pile wall you have to do some analysis and then you have to find out depth of embedment required for stability purpose. Okay. And there is another kind of uh, seat pile wall that is anchored seat pile wall. When anchored seat pile wall, then two things to be obtained one is the depth of embedment is required and the anchor force, these two things to be retired. So, that actually we have discussed and one has to go through in detail. And next one is uh, actually uh, deep excavation, and uh, there actually. Uh, uh, 
while discussing earth pressure theories, while discussing earth pressure theory, we have shown that depth of uh, tension crack and what is the depth of unsupported cut and that is the limit actually. We can uh, uh, excavate without any support, but, uh, uh, but there are various requirement where we need to excavate much deeper and in that case what we do we generally support it and then go for excavation and then if it is a like that means breast excavation that means supported excavation when you do then one has to design the support system. So, for design support system uh, there are some recommended uh, you know, pressure diagram is given for different soil type and using those pressure diagram and you can uh, find out the uh, there are some uh, model also how to analyze and it is if there are number of supports are there it will be con, uh, assumed like a uh, beam supported on number of uh, supports and if it is a continuous beam generally it will be indeterminate but to make it determinate we consider that each support point is hinged and that, that simplified analysis we have discussed because it is most of the time temporary so because of that that type of analysis may be enough so we have done that and you should go through properly and same thing again when you do deep excavation and because of some reason the bottom may uh, uh, become unstable. So, to make uh, that stability analysis one has to do that means, how uh, at what level you have to give support and how much you can excavate that stability analysis of the bottom also is done one has to also go through. So, these are the important things under this chapter. And last chapter we have discussed actually that uh, uh, inter machine foundation I have introduced very briefly and you can see here that I have first types of dynamic load and dynamic analysis equation of motion I have discussed then free vibration force vibration what is that I have discussed then damped and undamped vibration that when damping is considered that is called damped vibration and when damping is ignored the undamped vibration that also we have discussed and modes of vibration and equation of motion that is actually only for understanding that uh, a, if it is a block then it can have of 6 degrees of freedom that means, it can have vertical, it can horizontal and it can have rotation like this and it can have rotation like this. So, like that we have different degrees of modo, uh, motion and if it is a different degrees of motion corresponding equation of motion also I just for understanding I have given it may not be inter, uh, important for exam, but uh, it will be I have given and then what is natural frequency, resonant frequency, resonant amplitude that also while discussing theory we have discussed. Estimation of vibration amplitude for steady state vibration that means, we have given that equation u equal to f naught by k and 1 by under root 1 minus omega over omega n square whole square plus 2 d omega over omega n whole square. So, this is actually uh, equation for steady state uh, vibration amplitude uh, and uh, another is uh, m e into e by m multiplied by uh, omega over omega n whole square divided by same thing so, that is another equation. So, estimation of vibration amplitude for steady state motion that is the one we have done and this one has to practice uh, thoroughly and dynamic soil properties damping and shear modulus how to determine that also I have discussed uh, one has to go through and uh, logarithmic decrement and damping that means, using logarithmic decrement one can find out the damping that if the, the response actually uh, that, that way actually this is called logarithmic decrement. So, ratio log of ratio of successive peak is called logarithmic decrement and using that we can find out the damping of the soil uh, that one has to uh, learn properly and then what is over tune and what is under tune that also I have discussed over tune means what natural frequency will be more than the operating frequency or under tune means natural frequency will be less than the operating frequency. So, these things also we have discussed these are the basic minimum information required for machine foundation that also I have uh, discussed and uh, with this actually uh, I am just uh, close and I hope uh, whatever uh, way I have given you and I have solved the problem while solving the problem I have just problem I have kept in the in the powerpoint, but solving I have done by hand I have not printed and given you the um, uh, in the powerpoint, 
that is actually uh, otherwise if I give printing you may not go through or listen the solution step. So, with that purpose actually I have uh, written the solution by hand instead of giving in the printed form. Uh, that is the way actually if you follow me how I, while I am solving it will help you to understand the steps. So, and if, if you cannot understand in the once then you can repeatedly see and then to understand. So, I have not purposely actually I have not given that otherwise I have taken a large number of problem for each topic and I hope uh, uh, it will be uh, helpful to understand foundation engineering by this course. And in between while the prob, uh, this one uh, will be running uh, obviously, you have uh, 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 the some uh, procedure or provision to send question and queries which I will be uh, uh, responding uh, regularly and in addition to that I may uh, arrange some online uh, uh, interaction one or two session I will make where I will be present here directly uh, your question answer your question I will be receiving and replying immediately that also I will may do that and I hope uh, with all those things uh, uh, it will be uh, helpful and if it become helpful definitely I will be very much happy. Thank you all I will stop here and uh, wish you all the best and uh, for this course. Thank you.